Good morning. I am sorry. I am almost two minutes late. I I have a bearded dragon that was gifted to us, and she's beautiful. She's such a she's a beautiful creation of God's. Oh, but I was taking care of her and didn't realize what time it was. But praise God, here we are. This is the day that the Lord hath made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. This has been a week where people have had, you know, Thanksgiving on their mind. Things to be thankful for. Um, you either had gratitude for the things that God has done, or some people just grumble and complain looking at what they're lacking. The joy comes from realizing that we are so blessed. We have so much to be thankful for in Christ Jesus. If you are a believer of Jesus Christ and He is Lord and Savior of your life, oh, the riches that await, the peace that passes all understanding, the joy that flows from deep within if we just allow the Holy Spirit to have His way, if we look more toward God than we do the things of this world, there's a peace that passes all understanding that comes in, that brings a joy that's beyond anything this world could um, comprehend and understand. I'm going to be in Psalms 130. It starts like this. It's one of the songs of ascents. It says, Out of the depths I have cried to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. I think all of us at one point in our life were there and that's when we cried out to God and we asked Jesus to be Lord and Savior of our life and then watched the wonders that only God can do in our lives. It goes on and says, If you, Lord, should mark iniquities, O oh Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you that you may be feared. What a statement. If you, Lord, should mark iniquities, if God would count all our iniquities, what a mess we would be in. We know that there is none righteous, no, not one, except for Jesus Christ. That's why he was the ultimate sacrifice for our sins. If it wasn't for the grace of God, if our iniquities were counted against us, oh, damnation is the only thing that would be ahead of us. But because God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life, that we can instead go like it says here, oh Lord, who could stand? But, but there is forgiveness with you that you may be feared. You know, when you realize that you have been forgiven of your sins, that God Almighty has made a way that your sins be forgiven, and that He is the only one that can do that, well then, you have a reverence for God that is so deep. It's a reverence that makes you not want to sin against Him. If Jesus showed so much love for me, why would I want to hurt him by just throwing aside the gift of salvation by sinning when we know that it it hurts God just because he knows that it harms us when a father loves their child and they see their child makes mistakes it hurts that father it hurts that mother because you know the results of those mistakes well, God is a merciful God. And as it says here, if you, Lord, should mark iniquities, the Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you that you may be feared. We should have a reverence for God, realizing he is a holy and just God. One day, everybody will have to answer for their actions. Either It'll be Jesus saying, they're gone. Our sins are forgiven as far as the east is from the west. When we've repented and we ask Jesus to forgive us our sins, they're gone. Don't let yourself bring them back in your mind. 
and live in torment when you don't have to because they've been forgiven. They're gone. And don't let others say, oh, yeah, but you did. Yeah, but like it says here, there is forgiveness with you, God. There is forgiveness in Jesus. So those things are gone. They are gone. We are the redeemed. It says, I wait for the Lord. My soul waits. And in his word, I do hope. You may not see right away the results of your prayers, but you wait. You wait for the Lord's timing. And it says, I wait for the Lord. My soul waits. And in his word, do I hope. Continue to stay in his word. Continue to believe the promises he has in his word. Now the Lord says, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I will repay. Someone's done you wrong. Forgive and know that God will take care of it. You don't have to carry that person around as a heavy weight because you're not willing to forgive them. Forgive them. Christ forgave you. Forgive them. And if one day they'll stand before God, either the greatest thing would be that they would accept Jesus and get the forgiveness that Jesus has, or God will have to judge for their actions. Goes on and says, My soul waits for the Lord more than those who watch in the morning. Yes, more than those who watch for the morning. You know, there's the, the night guards and people that are just, oh, I can't wait till the morning time comes and have a fresh start of a new day. Even more than that. We wait for the Lord. Oh, Israel. And then he reminds Israel. Oh, Israel, hope in the Lord. You know, right now our nation has gone so far away from God. The church has gone away from God. You know, we need to remember again the Lord. Oh, Israel, hope in the Lord. For with the Lord there is mercy. You may have messed up, our nation may have messed up, but God is a God of mercy. And if we call upon him, if we repent, God hears those cries. And it says, and with him is abundant redemption. For he shall redeem Israel from all his iniquities. He shall redeem you and me. He is an awesome, wonderful God that loves us so, so dearly. And I'm going to end with this real quick as we remember who we are in Christ. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Our salvation is a gift from the Lord. There's nothing we can do to earn it. He wants our heart, our true repentance. It is a gift that he gives us. It says, not of works, lest anyone should boast. So enjoy that great salvation. Have a reverence for God, knowing that He is Almighty God, who has forgiven you of your trespasses, forgiven you of those things that you've done wrong, of those thoughts that, that were wrong. All you have to do is cry out to Him and say, Lord, I'm sorry, I messed up again. Lord, I'm sorry for these thoughts. And get into His Word. Know that He forgives you. And his Holy Spirit is inside of you to encourage you and strengthen you. Even if you walk three steps forward and fall back two steps, you're still one step ahead to the Lord. Continue that walk with God. So keep a praise song in your heart. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. We'll see you tomorrow morning at 7.